Come on, weasel. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's deliver this lumber. Actually, we're not delivering it today. We're going home today. Super exciting. Taking this lumber to Hortonville, Wisconsin, though. But we're stopping by at home for a reset on the way. And then from there, I've already got a reload that's taking me back to Winnipeg from Chicago. So I'm delivering this load Tuesday morning. They figured out a date. They don't, they would rather have it Tuesday than Wednesday. I figured, because they told me, you can deliver either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm thinking, well, they probably want it as early as possible. So Tuesday, first thing in the morning, we're gonna be there to unload this lumber. And then Tuesday afternoon, I guess we're going from Hortonville, Wisconsin to Chicago, because I've got to load my next load of steel in Chicago at three o'clock on Tuesday. So let's see how far away this place is. Chicago. Directions from Hortonville. Still haven't figured out if there's any Tims living in Hortonville. I'd call them Tim Hortonville. Hortonville, Wisconsin. Okay, let's see. Google say, oh, it's three and a half hours away. Well, we can do that, right? If I deliver it first thing in the morning, like eight in the morning, be empty by nine. And then I have till three to get into Chicago, three and a half hours away. I'll have plenty of time. That'll work. Beautiful. So that's the plan. And that load is taking me back home to Winnipeg for the next weekend. So off we go. We stayed on the west side of Swift Current, so we're just driving through Swift Current right now, just starting our day towards the east. We'll be home tonight, so that means we're gonna give her today. We'll try to spend as much time at home as possible. It'll just be a reset, <coughs> which is about a day and a half. Uh, I'll leave Sunday evening sometimes. It'll be a little more than a day and a half. It'll be two days. I'll make it work well. So, uh, Hortonville, Wisconsin is just a little more than a day's drive from from home. So I'll have to go a couple of hours Sunday night yet so that I can make it there Monday night. I'm hoping that the wind is going to be at my back today. Yesterday I was disappointed. Remember I said whenever you go across the prairies one thing you can count on is wind. They are not going to disappoint you. I had a strong wind that I was fighting on the way into Calgary. On the way out of Calgary yesterday, guess what? I had a strong wind I was fighting. It switched on me, so I was going against wind yesterday again. And today, I haven't even looked to see what direction the wind's coming from. Uh, I didn't even bother. I'm like, it's gonna be windy. Let's just cross our fingers and hope that wind is gonna shift and push us home and not drag us down on the way home. Be nice to have a little break. The, it gets so windy out here because there's nothing to really slow the wind down, right? So if you can get the wind in your sails and get it behind you, it can help you a ton. You can practically put it in neutral. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. It just sort of helps you all the way home. But if you're against that wind, oh boy. Your wallet is going to be drained very quickly at the pumps. Usually the wind is coming from the west towards the east, so it should be in our sails today.
it across the prairies, just barely. Looks like they closed the road just now. We just barely made it through before they closed the road. That was slippery from, uh, but halfway from Portage La Prairie to Winnipeg, it suddenly just got sheer icy. You can play hockey on the highway. Oh yeah, they're closing the road. Oh, we made it through. No help to some of the drivers out there. Some of the people out there are nuts. That's why they're closing the highways though. All these people are all stuck here now. Looks like this lineup's gonna add up quickly. Who knows how long they're gonna leave it closed for. I'm just glad I'm not stuck out there. I made it through. I get to go home and crawl into my nice warm bed and sleep beside my wife. You all have to sleep on the highway. That's not very nice, I know. But it's true. Look at all these people. Oh, I feel bad for them. The roads were really bad, really bad. So I totally understand why they closed them. Sorry, bud, I can't, I can't really get out of your way here. There's way too much snow in here. Somebody coming up right beside me here yet too. For some reason, the snow was always so bad between Winnipeg and Portage. And then you got another guy up here, another winner. Looks like he parked right in the lane. A couple of people were doing that on the highway. Like, oh, I don't know how many times you gotta explain this to people. But if you're scared and the weather is bad, the absolute worst thing you can do is stop on the highway, okay? That's the worst thing to do. First of all, if you're scared, you need to get off the highway. Completely, not on the shoulder, not on the shoulder. Find an off ramp, find a side road, turn off the road and get a full truck length off the road, away from the highway. I've been watching videos this week. You know, sometimes I just watch crash videos on YouTube, you know, just like any normal human being. I, for some reason, I'm watch people crash. And so many of them are just, you know, in a snowstorm or on the ice, people don't realize that if they stop or slow down too drastically, too quickly, they're more of a danger than the people, or just as much of a danger as the people going too fast. You're going too slow. People coming up behind you are gonna run you over and then you're gonna cause a big pileup. Like these videos I was watching on YouTube, just massive pileups up on the US interstates. All because some guy Got a little too scared at the front, and I feel bad for him, but, or her, but it stopped. Sort of on the shoulder, but the trailer was still in the lane, or even if they're on the shoulder, you can't really see where the lanes are, so got rear-ended bad by somebody, and then they blocked the whole highway, and then from there it was just dominoes. Truck after truck after truck after car after car, and there are several people who died. And you gotta sort of pin it on the people who stopped on the highway. People are dead because of that. So I understand it's scary, but the best thing you can do is get off, far off the road and wait till conditions improve or call for help or wait it out or just somewhere not on the shoulder and definitely not in the lane. Watch some of the videos I was watching yesterday. The people stop right in the lane in bad weather. It's not like they couldn't see, like visibility was really bad. But, oh man, that's what people were doing today again too. Pretty much stopping right in the middle of the lane. Cause it was a little slippery. Goodness gracious. It's tough, you know, you know people are scared. You don't wanna push them past their limits. But honestly, if, if you're too scared that you can't even navigate your vehicle off the road when the weather gets bad, you should not be driving in the first place because that's gonna happen sometime, you know? Sometime you're gonna be driving and you're gonna have to have the courage that when the weather gets bad and you get scared, you're going to have to navigate that vehicle to a safe stopping, safe stopping point. That's part of the responsibility of taking command of thousands of pounds of hurtling steel on the highway whether you be in a car or a big truck. Part of that responsibility is you need to have the ability and the courage to get off that highway 
when before causing a big pileup. I get it. It's scary. I get some white knuckled sometimes too, but you know, I feel like I was sort of born for this. I don't I don't really get unnerved by bad weather that badly. I just keep on trucking. It doesn't phase me that much, but there's some white knuckle moments, you know, and I can understand how it would scare some people. I've been yabber yabber yabbering here because I didn't really film much today. I apologize for that, but there was just prairies. You didn't miss anything, I promise. I promise. You missed a lot of telephone poles, fence posts. There was a bridge I went over. It went over a river. Sorry I didn't capture that moment. But uh, other than that, uh, you saw everything. You saw the whole day. Didn't miss anything. I guess I didn't film when uh, traffic was getting crazy. I mean, Usually in tense situations like that, my first my first thought isn't to vlog, it's to maintain my unit on the road, right? And then I'll talk to you guys when I'm in a situation like this, when everything's calmed down, there's lots of space. But all is good. We're gonna be home a little later than we want it to be, but we're gonna get home. That's that's the point. We are getting home. We aren't gonna be in a ditch, and we aren't going to be in a hearse. We're gonna get home safe. And so is everybody else on the road with me. I'm not gonna take anybody down. I'm not gonna cause any accidents. I'll just take her easy, you know? This van in front of me is going way too slow, for my opinion. Way too slow. But if he wants to go that slow, take the entrance to the ride on. I won't push him. I'm guessing it's a, because it's a minivan, there's possibly a family in there, maybe young kids. And I could go around them, but at this point, it might just cause more problems than just being patient behind him. I'll get around them yet. It's not even slippery here anymore, it's dry pavement. Still doing less than half the speed limit. Okay, here's a little icy. Okay, that's icy. Highway 100, which is on this the road perimeter road, the perimeter around Winnipeg, or the bypass around Winnipeg. And what happened in Winnipeg today? Like, why are the roads so slippery here? Did it rain? It seems like it rained and then it froze, because it's, it's been pretty bad. It wasn't that bad, just like two hours west of here. They must have gotten some rain today and it, and it froze up. It's so dangerous when it does that. Roads are a little better here now. 